So I recognize that I am in between you guys and drinking, so this will go fast. And uh, I'm also throwing out a lot of data, so if you snore, I'm asking the person next to you to hit you. And if you have questions, just ask while you're in. And with no further ado, the whole reason that we're here is because shopping has changed, and it's radically different, and it's also ugly, and it's confusing, and it's hard to follow, and the key for all of us is, what do you need to do to be more efficient and sell more cars for less? And ultimately, you've heard this six ways from Sunday, but it makes sense to repeat a couple of the key points. One is, everybody today is online, more than 96% of folks. 75% of them will not contact you before they walk onto your lot. So think about what that means. They're gonna go to your website. You know, there are other folks today who talked about how they wanna stay anonymous. They're gonna. Only 25% of them will reach out to you by phone or email to say, hey, I'm interested in what you have. The rest, just do it on your, on your phone, excuse me, on your website. And then they're all over the net. More than 20 different websites, more than 80 individual vehicle searches before they decide where they're gonna go and what they're gonna do. The other thing is that there is no longer a smoking gun. So it used to be easy with leads. You know that Billy Joe went to you, they filled out that lead, your guy called them in you know, three minutes, record timing, came down for a, a test drive, bought the car. That doesn't happen anymore. Very, very infrequently. So we've seen a great deal of association, I feel like I'm blocking y'all, a, a great deal of association with what we call shopper engagement. So things that people do on your website that lead to behaviors that we know lead to sales. So a lot of it starts around VDPs, vehicle detail pages, vehicle display pages, depending on where you're from. The, uh, the artist formerly known as Cobalt came out at, with a study a few years ago, 2012, and what they said was there is a direct correlation between the number of times a vehicle is viewed and how quickly it sells. So if it had between 20 and 30 VDP views, it spent 29% less time on the lot. Had more than 30, spent 44% less time on the lot. And this was great, but it caused a lot of problems because people were saying, well, if I have 1,000 VDP views, will then it sell in a day? And in fact, what, as we dug in, it's not true. There are lots of differences. So there are some things. So what you see here is some of the work that we've done. Brand matters. Model matters. All of those are different for days on lot and VDPs required for sale. I'm also loath to admit, but size matters in automotive. And so if you're a big dealership, you see it down here, big stores, it requires fewer VDPs to sell. And then if you go up to the top, those are small stores. Could be because of processes, could be because of broad scale advertising or awareness, but whatever it is, there is a correlation to size and how fast you can sell that car. Where you're located matters. The state you are in drives how many VDPs on average it will take to sell your car, and it's more in Oklahoma than it is in California. But ultimately, as you peel back the onion, what we see is that the velocity of views that you get is what drives a great deal. So it's the number of views you get in a time period that affects how quickly that car will sell. And so what we found is that there's a correlation. We're a bunch of sports fans. It's 30 and 30. And so if you can get 30 VDP views in 30 days, on average, that car will sell much, much faster before you drop off this curve into diminishing return. And for just the geeks out there, this is, this is exactly correlated like a nuclear decay curve. So if you're in Fukushima, this is what your yard looks like as it decomposes. So how does that work in real life? So we looked at all of the 2016 Honda Accords in our system. And if one got 12 VDP views, it spent 74 days on the lot on average. If it got 21 VDP views, it spent 51 days on the lot. 26 VDP views, 34 days. And then when you get to 43 VDP views, 27 days on the lot. But more than doubling that to 97 saves you two days. You've hit diminishing return. This is where you want to get to, not here. So the unfortunate thing is that your shopping is not even. So we looked at all of uh, 300 stores for the first half of 2016, and what we found is that the top 25% of vehicles received 72% of all of the shopping 
on their website, on the dealer's website. And, if, and the average VDP views per was 72. The other 75% of your cars only got 28% of the shopping. And if you go back to that 30 and 30, none of them hit that threshold. And it turns out, if it gets 30 VDP views in 30 days, it is significantly more likely to sell than if it doesn't. So why do we, why do we care? Dollars. God willing, you can sell this car at MSRP. Based on your gross and your carrying cost, if you hold it for 55 days, you make 600 bucks. If you can decrease that to 31 days on the lot, 30 and 30, you've more than doubled your profit because you have cut your profit, your holding costs way, way down. It's money in your pocket, but you have to do it in a smart way. So people always say, what's a VDP view worth? Well, the, the 47, or excuse me, the 31 VDP views that saved you $1,200 in holding costs, those are worth about 39 bucks a pop. The ones that got you from 43 to 97 VDP views and saved you two days, they're worth like 80 cents. So it all depends about when you get them in the life cycle of the car and what it's gonna do. So targeting, this stuff doesn't grow on trees. We spent a lot of money in auto. Um, this is 2012 to 2014, but it shows an 83% increase in CPC costs, which is the number two most increased segment in any advertiser. You know, the, the uh, I always joke, the evil empire. Dealer.com uh, published a study that the average CPC today is $3.05. For the math wizards, that's a 254% increase in click cost since 2012. The other thing is that we've lost spaces. You heard Greg talk about that earlier today. There are fewer spots to buy today than there used to be. But scrapping all of that, up to 50% of all of our advertising is wasted because we're not targeting effectively and siloed planning. You're advertising the same vehicles multiple times across the same platform when you may not need to. And so there's a great opportunity to have better targeting. So one of the things that we've created, it's a free tool, and, and uh, you know, anyone, even if you're not a customer of ours, can utilize it. We call it VinView Optimizer. Effectively, we ingest all of your website data by VIN. So we look at every single car in your lot and we say, okay, great. Here's how many shoppers this has received in you know, whatever time period you want and from source. So you can see this is a real dealer. Their number one most shop vehicles a used ch Dodge Charger. It's received 642 VDP views. A couple of things. One, it's either car porn. Two, it's you know, Mary Kay Pink. Or it has three wheels because it hasn't sold yet. So it should tell you, one, I'm getting bad traffic. Two, I need to merchandise this better. But it's still data that you have, and you know where it's all coming from, from by source. And so what you should fundamentally do is start with free. Right? This, is, this stores direct and organic traffic by VIN. If you look at this, these cars right here, these vehicles, they're getting plenty of traffic. Don't advertise them. Save your money for the, these down here that aren't getting anything. And you can layer on. Here's what this store is getting from AutoTrader. Great. These vehicles right here are covered. They're doing a great job. These need some more help. Put those into your SEM plan. Put them into your other activities. But just like your kids, every one of your vehicles is different and needs a certain and a different level of love. So you may have some that Man, they're, they're, you can kick them out of the nest right now, they'll be just fine. Others are going to need more work. You can set up specific campaigns based on that life cycle. You get a used car, it comes through recon. Five days after it gets on your lot, if it hasn't hit a VDP threshold, boom, go advertise it. After it hits 70 days, boom, go out and advertise it in a different way. If you're getting OEM cash on the hood, great, advertise those, put more money in your pocket. But be smart about the data you have and when you need to shop what you've got to move them as quickly as possible. So event tracking, again, came up earlier today. If you look at Google Analytics out of the box, somebody spends 30 seconds on your homepage, they go to your VDP, and they spend five minutes looking at your pictures, reading all of your info, 
watching the videos, and then leaves. Analytics counts that as a 30 second visit, two pages. Why? Because all of those actions you took didn't change the URL, which is how Google traditionally measures an event. You can fix that though with event tracking. So a relatively genericized VDP page, all of those red boxes are stuff that you should care about. They are shopper actions, right? Third party widgets, looking at photos, click to call, click to chat, click to text. People doing those things are engaged with you. You want more of them. Unless you have event tracking set up, you don't know anything that goes on because it's not changing the URL. You want to know what they're doing. You want to be able to measure it. You also want to know that this is how I get the traffic and from where that does all of these things. A couple of ways you can get track, uh, event tracking. It can be hard coded. Some of your websites will already do that. You can pay somebody to do it, third party app. You can get Google Tag Manager for free. Free is usually better. So what are five things that you can do right now after you sort out analytics and Tag Manager that will drive more sales for less? The first thing is identify what you see drives sales. So these are nine standard goals that we see that we have correlated to sale. People go, they look at your incentives, they cross shop your inventory, they're more likely to buy. I can show you that in a curve. It'll bore you to death. Real data matters. You can track these and then you can measure them and optimize the traffic that you get to get more of what you want. You want more VDP views? Great, you can drive that. You want website leads? You can do that, but you will be able to measure where it comes from and what it does and then ultimately you can use it as a measuring stick, a yardstick against everything that you're doing to see, okay, what's getting me the best stuff? I'm gonna go spend more money on that. What's not? I'm gonna go cut those guys out. But data-based decisions based on what you really want to use. The other thing, and, and we're in horse country, I used to be big into horses, we used to always have these things we called easy keepers. Right? An easy keeper horse was one that you could put out to pasture, water and sunshine, they got fat. Your cars are like that too. You have some that will sell themselves. Don't advertise them. Identify them and then ignore them until something goes wrong. Find the ones that are gonna have problems selling. Use the data you have to determine that. Compare everything in aggregate. So it may depend on what you need. I threw this up there because we have the data. If somebody wants the lowest VDP cost, great. They're gonna use us, this is a big dealer group. If they want more of the incentive views and other things, SEM does a better job than we do. They don't care what the cost per VDP is. This allows you to measure and rank what you're doing and then you can identify and prioritize where you want to spend your money. It's not one size fits all, everything's overlapping. You need to find what you want. And then the other thing is standardize. Because what you spend, you may get different results in a quantity standpoint. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater when you're looking at your analytics and you see something that sent you, you know, well, 20 shoppers or 20 leads or something else compared to something that gives you 500. Well, that, the source that gives you 20 may be far more efficient. Standardize them to a consistent level and then compare them. Is it getting me what I want in aggregate and then go spend more towards what works? This is an important one. The number one thing that y'all have is inventory and merchandise. Don't let somebody else advertise your vehicles to get traffic for them. Send them to your site. 90% of folks say that the dealer is the most important part of the buying process. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they view you as trustworthy. But oh, by the way, everyone who's looking is cross shopping something else. The faster you can get them to your site, to your retargeting, to your inventory, they're looking at your stuff, you're more likely to buy. And then, you know, Google and Amazon have been pretty successful. They try to reduce the click path to get the consumer to what they want. So don't send them to the home page, make them find the search bar, then go to the inventory page, and then put in what they want, you're gonna lose them. Send them to where it is. If it's scheduling a service appointment, send them right to the service appointment scheduling part. If it's shopping, send them right to the VDP. Get them to where they wanna go as quickly as possible. And then look at different ways to drive attribution. 
So this is something that, that we've had pretty good success with. And effectively, you can do it across anything you have. But you, if you look at all of the vehicles that have sold, you can start to break down where did that shopping come from. So if I sell a vehicle and 50% of the shopping comes from SEM and 50% comes from organic, hey, I think SEM has probably got some value in doing that. We break it down for our customers, for lot links, hey, 50 of the cars that you sold, 76 to 100% of the traffic came from us. Feel pretty good that we drove a lot of that traffic. We probably had something to do with that sale. Here it is for 50 to 25, 75, et cetera, et cetera. If you can associate $2,000 a copy, you can start to say, okay, for those 50 cars, you made 100 grand, we're gonna take credit for 76 and roll that up and look at an ROI. It's not perfect, but it's one more data point that can start to separate the wheat from the chaff. Look at this, it doesn't take long. It's super easy in your analytics to do. So what happens when you do it right? You're doing all these things, you're looking at your easy keepers, you're doing VIN level advertising. It doesn't take earth shattering movement to make a massive difference. So for all the Chevrolet stores, if you can shift the average VDPs per vehicle by less than four shoppers, you save seven days on lot. It doesn't sound like a lot, but you spend 14 bucks and you save 184, do it all day. It's true for Ford. It's true for Highline. It is across the board true for vehicles. Just to shift that curve a little bit makes a huge difference. So when we look at the Fast 50, they're the, the, the top dealerships that we see doing it right. And what you see is when they're doing it right, that's the red line, 24 days on average, versus 92. And across the board, they're saving money and they're turning their cars faster because they're advertising what needs to be advertised and not the stuff that's gonna sell itself. And it goes across brands regardless of where it is, new and used. So God bless America, it's the last slide. These are all really important, or at least things you should look at, free tools to help you. So the first one, G Google Analytics and GTM setup. We are so passionate about this helping you be more efficient and smarter with your business, we will set it up for you for free, even if you're not a customer of ours. Not a lot of folks give away free. It's not a way for us to get your name so we can bombard you with a bunch of crap. The, a rising tide raises all boats. Do it. It makes all the sense in the world. VinView Optimizer, we showed you that, free. Google Analytics, GTM, white papers and blogs, free. Important for you to learn, they will help you if you care. But there are many, many, many folks out there that can help. That's your option. Let's start drinking. Any questions?